Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint a basic watercolor flower. We're gonna do two different perspectives, a side facing flower and an open face flower and how to use two different holds on your brush. So we're gonna be doing teardrop shapes using the point of our brush and directly in line with the stroke. And then we're also going to flip our brush and use the belly of the brush so that we can have a few different varieties of options when we're painting huge floral pieces or wreaths, etc. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Okay, so now we're gonna paint a basic flower, combining everything I've taught you so far about compound strokes with painting leaves, vertical and slanted holds, and we're gonna paint a basic flower. I'm gonna use a size six brush. You can grab just Opera Rose or Opera Rose and Scarlet Lake, whatever color you want your flower to be. And we're gonna use a compound stroke, but instead of painting a stroke like a leaf, we are going to use a slanted hold about 45 degrees away from the paper <clears throat> and apply pressure. And then as we curve around, we're going to release pressure for this little teardrop. So we've got an upside down teardrop. So I'm gonna do it again. So thin pressure, curve around and gradually release that pressure. And then to make it look more like a flower, you can do another smaller same stroke like this and maybe just have little petals that are tucked behind. So this is our main petal and then we've got another bigger petal over here, but all of our teardrops or our, all of our petals are pointing to create a V shape. So we're not doing our first teardrop And then our second teardrop is pointing down like this because then the stem would be here and that just doesn't make sense. So you wanna make sure <clears throat> you've got your first teardrop, pressure, gradually release. And then you're pointing directly to that same spot, pressure, loop, release. And then I just do pressure and kind of curve in. Then from here, I'm just gonna add a stem, maybe some yellow green with sap green and lemon yellow deep. And whatever direction this V is pointing, that's where my stem is gonna be. So I'm gonna use little to no pressure on a vertical hold with my brush. You can connect it or not connect it. And then we can add some leaves using compound strokes that I showed you in the previous video or chapter. So this is just a basic side view of a flower. Maybe it's a tulip, um, but same thing that we were practicing with our wet and wet technique and the leaves. When you're painting a full floral piece, you don't want every single petal of every single flower to be the same hue and value. So maybe some are more pink than others. Some are lighter. but I've got just three compound strokes. Well, two compound strokes and one little C curve situation. And just pressure and loop back down. And that white space between your petals is what's gonna make it look like a flower because your petals are separated by that white space. But you also don't want your petals to be too far apart, where you have a petal here and over here's your next petal and then over here's your other petal, because then that looks too spaced out and weird. 
So you want them to be touching, but have little slivers of white space. Little, little, or the, <laughs> little slivers of white space so that it looks like separate petals. And then if you wanna do a basic open flower, we're gonna use a very different hold on your brush. We're gonna use a slanted hold. But instead of using the, going in line with the handle of my brush, I'm going to go perpendicular to the handle of my brush. So instead of bringing my stroke this way, which is in line with the handle, same direction as the handle of my brush, I'm gonna go this way, which is perpendicular. So I'm gonna paint a basic open flower with just these kind of up and down wavy motions of my brush, making sure every petal is pointing back to the same middle. This could be a cherry blossom. It could be an anemone. It could be a pansy. Let's do a pansy with just three petals in like a triad. So I'm using the belly of the brush for this simple stroke. And then for the pansy, I'm gonna go back in and Use wet and wet painting. Maybe up here too. And for your anemone, you could go back in with black. or brown or yellow, anemones will have black. You wanna make sure your petals are dry. These aren't, but we're just gonna be a little careful. So with people, painting flowers, the biggest mistake I see is people unaware of how petals are connected together. So you wanna think about how a flower grows and each petal is connected to the same center of the flower, which is connected to the stem. And so you wanna make sure that all of your petals are, are pointing at the same center point. So if we had this petal just slightly shifted up like this, pointing up that way, that would not look appropriate. It would look really weird because it's not connected to the same center point. So you wanna make sure that as you're going around with these open shaped flowers, all your petals are pointing in towards that same exact spot so that it makes sense. And then same thing with your side facing flower. You wanna create that V, that V shape, like that V shape, because all of your petals are gonna be connected. If you think about like an orange, for example, if you're peeling an orange from the top to bottom, but you're leaving the peels connected to the bottom, they're all connected to that bottom of the orange. It's the same thing with petals as a petal or as a flower opens, that those petals are still connected to the base. So if I'm looking at a, uh, the side view of a flower, I'm seeing a V shape. But if I'm looking at the top of a flower, I'm seeing a circle like so. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was just one part of our complete beginner's guide to watercolor. So make sure you go check out that master video. It's got all the goods in it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.